everybody, this is uh, downtown Knoxville. This is Gay Street, the main street in Knoxville. And uh, here at the corner, that old building there, that is the Emporium Art Center, where we're going to look at the art show that's starting uh, in November. Um, yeah, let's go inside, have a look. All right, hey everybody, yeah, we are in front of the Emporium. I just want to give you a little background about my photography and I have to read some of it uh, because I summarize it. So the background, my interest in photography goes back to my first darkroom work in my early teens. During my 20s I drifted towards a very strong focus on black and white photography due to its unique possibilities of artistic expression. I discover shapes, surface, contour, lighting, reflection and texture in a variety of seemingly mundane subjects that would elude most casual observers. My imagination thrives on subjects involving graphical elements, patterns and repetitions such as in modern architecture and nature. Uh, this photo show by three artists, uh, Elena Ganusova, Andreas Koshan and Jorg Nabatka is called Our Language Creative Photography. My part of the show is called For Jorgen the Podka, 40 Years in Black and White. Uh, the photographs in this show and, and the, of my part of the show encompass the range of four decades of pursuing photography as a serious hobby, showing my involvement of subjects, vision and techniques. The focus on my work has always been black and white due to its potential for artistic expression, all the way to the very abstract. Starting out with documenting vanishing breeds or professions in my native Germany, I quickly developed an interest for modern architecture, discovering patterns, repetitions, curves, light and shadows, which then spilled into nature and other subjects as well. The images in this show highlight this continuous journey of discovery and development, starting out with images taken on negative film and printed in the chemical darkroom. More recent images were taken on negative film or digitally and printed digitally, while always aiming to achieve the very highest standards of quality craftsmanship, the archival museum quality print. Those are limited to editions of 50. If you want to follow more on my work, you go to facebook.com forward slash Dopatka Photography or Instagram, I am under Jorgen Dopatka Photo or my website dopatka.com. Thank you very much. Okay, we're now in the Emporium Art Center and we're going to go downstairs where the photo show is uh, going on between three, uh, three photographers, Andreas, Koshan, uh, all my work is in the back, and then on the right side we have the work from Elena. Alright, this is the show here from uh, right to left with all my work still shown here and then running into uh, Andreas is eventually there after the Alright, here we are the opening reception. I'm chasing people here.
Okay, I'm going to give you a short tour now of the show. This is the first image. It's actually, it's one of the oldest ones too. It's from 1982. Al Bertani with his uh, liver sausages uh, from home slaughtering, which he did every year. Uh, he lived in a neighbor village from me in uh, Germany and uh, was a cabinet maker, a farmer, had bees, uh, we helped hang every summer, etc. So whatever picture I took off from him, he, he stood there as he, he could smile there for an hour and show proudly his craft. So uh, this is fil with film and with uh, wet chemistry print. The next one is also from Germany in, in 82. That's a, a biannual farmer's market where they auctioning or the farmers come and buy some cows or sell some cows so here is some negotiating going on it's called a deal and this is a an image from a preserved uh, pioneer village in alabama old style uh, store and this is a recent uh, dogwood picture here from knoxville of course knoxville is famous for uh, dogwood plants uh, in black and white, even in black and white, comes maybe out interesting, but the color one is, of course, uh, also interesting. This image is actually taken in Harden Valley, uh, west, uh, west Knoxville, uh, during tobacco harvest. At least back then, the Wallen brothers were still uh, uh, planting and growing tobacco in 2007. So I followed the whole uh, story from planting the seedlets to actually shipping the tobacco to the to this, the market. This is uh, actually I took a stop right on the autobahn in Germany, which is illegal. But uh, to take this shot because I, I rarely had seen trees with with the uh, the snow painted on the side. I call it Oreos, Oreo trees because I think that's how they make the Oreos. They just cut the slices here. Um, this is from a little, actually a little uh, university town in Germany, uh, Tübingen. Um, a dozen rowboats. Just uh, not a pattern item. This is again a regional item. That's uh, reflections on Fontana uh, Lake in North Carolina, south of uh, Knoxville. Then we are going into some graphical elements in, uh, in nature. Those are both taken in Death Valley sand dunes, two different sand dunes, Panamint dunes and uh, Mesquite dunes. And then we move from nature graphical to architectural graphical, which is really my my strongest area, uh, patterns, repetitions, etc. in architecture. Then we move to the subject of water. This is a very uh, kind of important image. It's called um, Waves at Picnic Point. And Picnic Point is on a campus in Wisconsin where I met my wife and where a lot of students go. And uh, this I did uh, after we dropped off our daughter who went to school there too. So everybody who goes to University of Wisconsin knows Picnic Point and, and the beautiful views here. Those two images are, I took actually a, on a business trip in Chile on the beach. It's the same, actually same scene. One of them with the water running and the other one after the water has run. So this is kind of the before and after. And it looks totally different with the water and without the water. Then uh, we're going to move in a whole cluster of uh, architecture. In fact, I arranged those, this is all the patterns in architecture. And I arranged them, the, the whole flow of the lines is coming out of the center here. Uh, this is a reflection of a construction crane in a curved building. This is a reflection of the building in itself, in Alabama. This was a true snapshot. A biker was just coming around and I had my camera ready and he was gone. Uh, that's a museum in Canada. And this is a power plant. Uh, 
structure with a beautiful architecture. This is one of my personal favorite Im images here, the spiraling staircase, which looks like a DNA uh, to many people, and uh, some people think it's two stairs or one stair, but it's really only one stair, and then the shadow now in almost perfect symmetry. Then this is my only mixed media, a real experiment. This is a, a regular print uh, on, on wet chemistry, and then I tried something, uh, I did a photocopy onto wood veneer. And then I post them to kind of look like a drop clustering there. Here you can actually see the wood uh, uh, details here. This I did in 86 and uh, as you see it's still uh, very much alive. So that's a very experimental item. Then we have more patterns. This is a facade of a um, uh, hospital building. I call it digital divide because it's all like digitized zeros and ones, or lines and no lines. And then we're going into patterns. Uh, those are, well, it may look to you like dark chocolate uh, pralines or something like this, but it's really shrink-wrapped hay bales in Ireland. And then we have a ghost floating up the stairs in an office building here. And then we have a, a peek through, I call it inside out, because we're looking from inside out. And it's mostly really dark, like, which, I, which I like a lot. And similar here, I captured a person coming on a stairway in a hotel in Atlanta. I call it spiralosity. It's kind of a spiral. And then we finish the show with an image that everybody knows, Eiffel Tower, but not in the typical uh, view when the Eiffel Tower stands, but this is really just showing the graphics from the, from the ground floor. And lastly, we have a really old image here from the original Autobahn that was built in the 40s or 30s. Uh, I could see this from my home, actually, in Germany. And this has been torn down since and rebuilt with a six-lane road. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, even if you couldn't attend in person, I hope you got an impression on, on the spectrum of images that I have on display here and uh, how I have evolved over the years. And uh, stay in touch. Follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you very much. It was so thick, it wouldn't take, it wouldn't fit. So I said, okay, let me grind down. Ah, which still wouldn't fit. Let me grind down. And eventually it worked.